Hello everyone! <clears throat> welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Arielis Estrella, and here on my channel I usually do a little bit of everything, whatever I feel suits my life at the moment. Um, I typically do paintings, I do uh, music, and I also have started to branch out into physical wellness as I focus on my health and my longevity. I have started recording my yoga sessions. I've been doing yoga since I was 16 and with this yoga sequence that I'm going to do, I am going to add this audio that was really inspirational. Um, as a non-binary person, there's this concept of the feminine, the divine feminine and the sacred masculine. And as someone who's non-binary, I have been working with both, incorporating them both into my life, recognizing both energies inside me. And this audio that I'm going to incorporate into my yoga video is an apology from the divine feminine to the sacred masculine. Um, I want to say that as men have had power for the majority of history, I want the scales to be equal and I want women to be as powerful and as empowered and have the tools and realize that it's within themselves to change their lives and not to rely on men or other women or anyone. It's, it's really on you. So this video... Um, it's just going to be me stretching. Feel free to stretch if you feel like, you know, moving yourself. I typically do yoga in the mornings after waking up to get the air movement, um, to get the air flowing in my body. And um, I low-key cried when this audio, when I was listening to this meditation. I will link the meditation in the description box um, if you guys want to listen to it on your own. Um, happy healing to everyone, and if you enjoyed this video and want to see more yoga content, let me know. I've been a yogi since I was like 16. Um, I did it in between sports and um, down in Palm Springs in urban yoga. Shout out to Kristen and Jen Giovanni. They were my teachers and really got me in a good, um, they got me a good start for the rest of my life when, with my yoga practice. So... Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and if you enjoy, make sure to comment. If you want to see more yoga videos, like and share with people if you want them to experience what you've experienced. Um, let's get started. Apologies to the sacred masculine. I apologize for those moments when I couldn't see beyond my projections to your true nature. With so much relational trauma in the rearview mirror, I couldn't distinguish the heartless from the benevolent warrior. With my lens blurred by unhealed emotions, I was unable to see you in your wholeness. I unknowingly projected my negative expectations without recognizing those moments when you were moving from love. Please forgive me my projections and know that below my pain was a heart that genuinely longed to merge with yours. I apologize for pushing you to open your heart when you weren't ready. I longed to be met in my openness and I couldn't bear the disconnect between us. I am nourished by direct communication and I took your silence personally. I didn't understand the relationship between your detachment and your warrior conditioning. I do see this now. From the beginning, you have been cast in the role of warrior protector, and your emotional armor was fundamental to your task. Without it, you would not have been able to remain vigilant on the battlefield, nor succeed in the competitive marketplace. As our world moves away from survivalism as a way of being, I am hopeful that you will feel safe enough to live from an open heart. Such beautiful light comes through that opening. I apologize for not always seeing your limitations and struggles. There were times when I could not see past my expectations and fantasies. I had grown up with a fairy tale of a great night that would save me, and I clung to that vision, 
preferring the perfection projection to the reality of humanness. As a result, I didn't always see how much stress you carried, how difficult things were, how hard it was to hold it all together. Of course, we perpetuated this projection together. You hid your humanness from view, while I chose not to look for it. I look forward to the day when our relationships are not predicated on illusions, but on a deep recognition of each other's authenticity. I apologize for giving you mixed messages about how I wanted you to manifest. At times, I wanted you to be soft and tender, at other times, dominant and protective. How confusing this must have been for you, how challenging to go back and forth between such differing feeling states. It has been so confusing for all of us trying to straddle the line between our needs for both safety and vulnerability. One day, the perversions of polarity will fall away and we will arrive at a sacred balance between all healthy ways of being. Women will feel safe to assert their voice and embody their wholeness, and men will feel equally safe disarming and speaking from their vulnerability. On the rivers of essence, everything flows in the same direction, towards the ocean of wholeness. I apologize for being passive-aggressive towards you. I was not taught to express anger directly and I was frightened of your aggressiveness. I know that you have had similar challenges with experiencing your sadness and releasing your tears. In the world we are moving towards, I am hopeful that both genders will have seamless access to all emotional states and healthy forms of expression. I am sorry that I expected you to fill my emptiness, when the only one who can fill it is me. I have often looked for answers in relationships, somehow imagining that another could complete me. After so many centuries of disempowerment, I didn't realize that I had the tools for my own self-creation, but I am recognizing it now. Where before we met as two fragmented beings, we will soon meet as two whole beings, each of us healthy boundaried, well integrated and intrinsically complete. I am grateful for all those moments when you held me safe and operated within the heart of compassion. The backlash of recent decades was a necessary response to generations of suffering but many of your contributions got lost in the shuffle. In my efforts to find my voice and stand my ground, I have not always given credit where it is due. I encourage you to reclaim anything you have lost along the way and to proudly embody the sacred masculine as you once did. I apologize for those moments when I discouraged your power. I could not distinguish it from its historical misuses. I am grateful for the many positive contributions you have made to my reality. I realize that you often communicated your love for me and the village with needs, not words. I thank you for helping to construct the structures that my expansion relies upon. I thank you for laboring long and hard to establish rule of law. I honor the warrior spirit that built the railroads, the cities, the bridges that bring us into contact with one another. I honor those warriors who fought and died on battlefields in an effort to protect us. You have sacrificed so much in order to hold us safe. Praise to those benevolent warriors who came before. I am grateful for grandfather for holding the space for my expansion with patience and wisdom. I am grateful for Father, for defending and sheltering me. I am grateful for Father Sky, for showing me a vision of possibility that transcended my circumstances. I am grateful for the Divine Father, the real
revealed Father of all of us. I now feel His divine presence so close, fiercely compassionate. He was always right here, holding me safe. There has been so much blame between us, so much hatred and name-calling. To be sure, it is essential that we express our anger and heal our hearts. Nothing should be swept under the rock in that process. Everything should be exposed. But it is also important that we have compassion for each other and endeavor to understand the context of our actions. We have all been victims of a sociological landscape that impacted on our identifications and behaviors. Like two different species in the same bed, we were compelled by circumstances to inhabit roles that kept us miles apart. Those roles have caused us great suffering, each gender suffering in its own way, to the extent that one gender was denied wholeness, the other was denied it as well. Women were denied the right to basic protections and pathways of expression men were denied access to a tender, receptive way of being. No one got off easy, despite appearances. As we move towards a more hardened interface, may we create space for new visions of possibility. We must begin the process by healing the generation gap that exists between us. We must soften the edges perpetuated by our reactivities. We must heal the rifts along the gender continuum that keep us apart. In my most clarified imaginings, I envision a world that fully celebrates the healthy feminine and the healthy masculine, instead of throwing all gender differences out with the bath of water. We make a conscious distinction between benevolent and destructive identifications. We craft a sacred balance of our healthiest aspects. Each of us identifies the unique fusion of feminine and masculine energies that aligns with our essential nature. And we openly learn from one another. Men teach healthy manifestation, women teach healthy womanifestation, and we come to humanifestation together. We meet each other in our entirety. May we never forget the relational and co-transformative nature of human expansion. Although the ultimate romance is with your own soul, it is our experiences together that give birth to the essential lessons. We are each here to participate in this dance of sacred imagination, stepping on each other's toes and turning each other toward God one clumsy step after another. We trip, and then we get back up with greater awareness. With this in heart, I am hopeful that we can learn to accept one another in our humanness. We are going to continue to make mistakes, but there is grace in that if we see our errors through to the lessons they contain. I look forward to the day when we can meet one another in our true nakedness stripped free of unresolved emotions, pain-induced projections, the distortions of duality. For too long, we have been on opposite sides of the river, the bridge between our hearts washed away by a flood of pain. But the time has come to construct a new bridge, one that comes into being with each step we take, one that is fortified with benevolent intentions and authentic self-revealing. As we walk toward one another, our emotional armor falls to the ground, transforming into the light at its source. And when we are ready, we walk right into the God Self at the center of the bridge, puzzled that we ever imagine ourselves separate. May you feel the presence of the Divine Mother close at heart, inviting you to rest deeply on the tender shores of your own essence, nestling you in the grateful arms of those you have protected. Those who have received your blessings may not always acknowledge it, but your acts of love have landed within us, growing us stronger 
and infusing us with love's light. Rest, dear warrior, rest. I hold your heart safe. So that was my yoga practice video as well as the guided meditation with the Divine Feminine and Sacred Masculine. I just want to say thank you guys for understanding that I am an adult, I have a life to live, and my life right now has been schoolwork and then going to my job. So I am making the routine, I'm making the schedule. I feel like right now it is easy for me to focus on schoolwork and then my job because I have to go to that location and then when I come home either focus on schoolwork and then whatever little energy I have left um, to produce uh, art and to paint and to make music and then to get onto YouTube and film different aspects of my lifestyle. I think I've also been really hard on myself as a person who is human living in a pandemic. I have given myself the, the space to grieve for the loss of fellow humans, for the pain of being separated from people that I love, from losing contact with people that I love. Um, I feel like that is something that I can't really bring on YouTube and make videos about just because I'm not the type of person who wants to bring my personal life into, you know, this platform. This platform is included 
and its primary purpose is for me to come on here and to speak about my life, to give other Mexican Americans um, kind of like an idea of what it is to live as an artist, um, and also the idea of what it means to be a complex human and being more than any identity that this world has put on us, whether it's male, female, non-binary, Mexican, white, black, like, I think that there's a part where the collective consciousness is waking up and transcending a lot of the old ideas that were placed on us from uh, from childhood. And I don't care. Like, I don't care that nobody or, you know, essentially... Let me collect myself. I don't care if this YouTube channel, my TikTok, any social media has uh, like views or likes. Um, I feel like early on when I was like really young, I definitely wanted that because being honest, like it was another way to have income and to have a life without needing to do, you know, the traditional roots. But being honest, like, it feels really good to take aspects of my personality, take aspects of who I am and who I could be, and to put it online. I think that the biggest thing that this break has taught me since, like, I stopped uploading regularly is that I really need to slow down. The world showed me that I need to slow down, but I need to slow down and I need to write out my scripts, write out my concepts, have pre-written thoughts. Journaling has been really helpful. I've been using it for my art content, for my music content, for video content. So journaling, going slowly, really taking the time to take all the thoughts that are inside my head and writing them out and making sure that they're clear and concise for these videos. Um, the purpose of this video for me was like divine timing. Like I noticed in the world that there's a lot of displaced pain with women towards men and men towards women. And then, you know, that kind of bleeds into everything else. And I have noticed like as someone who is non-binary but does have male privilege, I have had the resources, I've had the support, I have had the energetic like love that allowed me to grow and I think that a part of my male privilege also comes with the responsibility of reshaping the male population and essentially reshaping them by giving them the tools to realize that hey, we were raised to be stoic assholes who didn't really care about other people's emotions, energy or time. And so now is the time to really do that deep work and um, unlearn that for yourself. I'm unlearning it for myself and it's a process, you know, as well with juggling like schoolwork and my job. Um, I do want men to change, but at the same time, I want women to change. I, I know that a lot of the times online, and this is just online, I don't see this really in person, which is interesting, but online I noticed that there's a lot of misogyny, and there's a lot of misandry, but there's very few people out here that understand and see both sides, and understand that both sides are not perfect, both sides are flawed, but the other side is not the enemy, and as someone who incorporates both energies and both perspectives into my daily life, I want to be an agent for change in making sure that these nonsensical gender wars, these divisive tactics to keep us fighting with each other isn't working. Um, it's a part of the problem with capitalism and what's destroying our environment. But this is my life and I can only speak from my life's perspective and my life's perspective showed to you through this camera is me as an artist, me as an individual, and the different aspects of who that is and who that will be in the future. Um, what I can commit to this YouTube platform and my online presence in general is going to be continuously me and who I've been is just inherently and intuitively radical and alternative 
and um, full of different perspectives that I find not a lot of people have been exposed to or, you know, are willing to talk about. And so hopefully this space can become that. Um, I hope to manifest a community of individuals who are like me, but also very different um, from me. And I want us to have healthy dialogue. I want us to express our artistic, philosophical, um, emotional, like literally everything that a human is, could be, and will be. Um, I want that to be my channel, and specifically as, you know, I noticed that digital art and other forms of art are starting to become more exposed online, I want to make sure that I carry the traditional paintings um, and just different art forms online as well. Um, because the way that I treat the internet is essentially a huge time capsule. And I know that I will be dead and I will not be able to look back on all the new change that is happening. But I'm 24 right now and I've been recording myself with a camera since I was 16. And so I feel like it is, it's like a life, lifelong hobby of recording myself doing different activities and different things that work for me in the moment um, because it's helping me personally by when I'm older I'll be able to look back on this content and say like wow I did all this shit I had so much fun and now it's on record on the public record on the human record to show others that like hey like you might have been raised by, you know, immigrant mother and a stepfather that didn't really know you. You might have been raised in a racist school system. You might have been raised being gender divergent or being neurodivergent. And you might have been raised being um, manipulated or gaslit um, by the community around you. So, like, these are all aspects of who I was raised around and who influenced me, but I also realized that as an unlearning human, as someone who has the full power and tools to create in my hands, I know that I can create the life that I want. And the life that I've always wanted for myself is one of peace, one of balance, one of equality, one of action, one of color and vibrancy, um, and I'm just going to continue to do that. And, you know, I haven't uploaded in a minute, so hence why I felt like I needed to give this explanation. But I also am not uploading for anyone. I'm uploading for myself. And I pray that, you know, there are people out there that can understand and relate and, you know, help support me in this life because this life is not easy and it's not cheap. Um, and as a 24-year-old college student, like, I know y'all y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, this was just, this is just an excerpt um, from like my subconscious that I wanted to put into this video because it's really what got the wheels turning after listening to the meditation. So hopefully it opens up something in you, it sparks something in you, inspires you to, you know, think deeper, be present, be mindful of your actions, and um, let's see where the world takes us. Have a great day, and um, I'll see you guys next time. I am trying to get back onto my regular schedule of like each day of the week has a different artistic activity, and typically Wednesdays are my recording day and Thursdays are my upload day. I'm gonna try and keep that going, but I just wanna say that for those of y'all out there, both far and wide, who have supported me on every social media since I got on the internet, from the moment I was on Facebook, to switching over to Instagram, to making Instagram like the main thing, to starting on YouTube, to starting a Twitter, to starting a TikTok, to deleting Facebook, to deleting Instagram, to just having Inst or to just having uh, YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter, and then also right now kind of balancing like the internet and social media because I don't really want to be on my phone. I don't want to be comparing my life to others. I don't want to really see what others are doing. I just want to use social media as a tool to be this time capsule for myself and for other humans that feel like it'll benefit them. But I had um, a huge aspect of my identity be people-pleasing and, 
you know, performing, and I had to unlearn all of that this, this pandemic, and now I feel like I'm at a more authentic and whole self. I'm doing things for myself first, uh, my needs are met first, and I'm not going out of my way to read minds and to assume that other people need me more than they actually do. I'm just another adult on here who is talking to a camera and sharing my aspects of my life. And I think that's all that, like, you know, postmodernism could really give me. It could give me a, a digital platform, a digital space where I can create myself, um, where I can create my life and share that with others. But at the same time, I also need to, you know, I want to be an artist, I want to be a painter, I want to sell my paintings, I have, you know, art pieces all over my apartment, and I want to get to the point where I'm shipping out paintings and art pieces and, you know, anything else that can really just make sure that I am able to create and have an easy life. Well, not easy, because, you know, there's always going to be something else, but to give me a, a simple and peaceful life and that way when I have that simplicity and that peace I can really show up and show for up for my community and help them understand their subconscious their minds their bodies their souls their spirits um, the whole the whole of it and yeah I just want to say that like I am team human and I am team like world and I want us all to do great and I want us all to have a life that we are proud to reflect on and not be resentful of when we're in our old age. Hopefully we all make it to that old age. You and I both know as Gen Zs or younger millennials that the older generation did a pretty good job of destroying everything, taking everything, using up everything and leaving us with crumbs. But I feel like that's also the genius of who we are is that we were able to take such a shitstorm and still morph and shape beautiful things out of it and a beautiful future out of it a beautiful life out of it um so yeah thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed your yoga with me i hope you these words resonated and you felt them um and i hope you have a lovely day i have work later today so i have to do schoolwork, do some reading and then i'm going to upload this in my free time thank you guys so much for watching see you next time